In just one week, three stories have shaken the tech world. Google's quantum chip bending the laws of physics, China's brain-like AI claiming speeds up to 100 times faster than ChatGPT, and the US government demanding secret access to the most powerful AI models on Earth. What sounded impossible yesterday is reality today. Let's break it down. Google's quantum chip has just done something that sounds impossible and it could reshape how we understand the universe. Inside Google's quantum AI lab, scientists working with Google's Willow quantum processor alongside teams from Princeton and the Technical University of Munich had pulled off something that until now had only ever existed on paper. They managed to create what's called a Floquet topologically ordered state. If that name doesn't mean much at first, here's the breakdown. Most of us grew up learning about three basic states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Maybe you've also heard about plasma or Bose-Einstein condensates. All of these are what scientists call equilibrium states, stable, predictable conditions described by classical theorem dynamics. But quantum mechanics is messy and counterintuitive. It allows for phases of matter that only exist when the system is constantly being pushed, distributed, and kept out of equilibrium. That's what Flocate State is, a completely new state of matter that shows up under rhythmic repeating changes that classical physics just can't describe, behaving almost like a pattern or a choreography in the quantum realm where energy is continually cycled rather than allowed to settle. To actually see the state, the researchers had to get creative. They built an interferometric algorithm which is basically a way of visualizing the interference patterns in quantum behavior. And through that, they could track the transmutation of exotic particles, particles that up until now were only predicted on paper. In practice, this meant pushing their quantum system far beyond normal computing tasks into a zone where it became a physics laboratory, capturing signatures of states no one had ever directly measured. It's not just a neat experiment either. This marks quantum processors becoming real laboratories for studying matter that traditional methods can't access, something like particle colliders, but at the chip scale, capable of simulating universes of conditions without needing gigantic infrastructure. In other words, quantum chips like Willow aren't just about raw computing speed, they're opening doors to physics we've never been able to probe, letting researchers dial in realities that can't exist under ordinary conditions and measure them in real time. And Willow itself already has a track record of shaking things up. Back in 2023, it completed a calculation in under five minutes that would have taken the fastest supercomputers billions of years a demonstration of quantum supremacy on a scale never seen before. That feat alone rekindled interest in Hugh Everett's Many Worlds interpretation, the idea that our universe is just one among countless others where every quantum event splits reality into branches. This latest experiment does improve the multiverse, but it makes the debate impossible to ignore because it shows how quantum systems can host entirely new realms of behavior, hinting at layers of physics that don't fit our current maps of reality. What makes this truly revolutionary is its potential. By proving that processors like Willow can simulate these unstable states of matter, scientists are basically saying we can now explore the physics of the impossible physics that could ripple out into new quantum technologies, material science, maybe even advances that spin into energy or communication systems decades down the road. Imagine materials engineered to exhibit properties only seen in exotic phases, or networks that transmit information via entirely new quantum effects. We're looking at a whole new era of quantum simulation where chips are not just number crunchers, but experimental arenas capable of probing new frontiers of matter. Now let's head over to China, where researchers have unveiled what's being described as the world's first large-scale, brain-inspired artificial intelligence system. 
a potential game changer for both global technology development and energy sustainability. They've announced Spiking Brain 1.0, a large language model that mimics the way the human brain actually works, firing only the neurons needed only when they're needed. And it's supposedly up to 100 times faster than systems like ChatGPT or Copilot. If true, it could completely reset the playing field and redefine what we expect from AI systems. While traditional models grow by stacking more and more parameters and consuming more power, this approach flips the paradigm by making each thought more efficient. So what makes spiking brain different? To understand that, you need to look at how current LLMs operate. Models like GPT process entire sentences at once. They use something called the attention mechanism, which maps out relationships between every word in the input. So if you see the sentence, the baseball player swung the bat, the model considers every word together to decide that bat refers to the baseball bat, not the animal. This works great, but it's extremely resource heavy. It needs massive GPU farms and consumes staggering amounts of electricity. Every word is compared to every other word, which is why running these models takes so much power. Multiply that by millions of users and the environmental footprint is staggering. Making AI a non-trivial contributor to global data center energy consumption, Spiking Brain claims to ditch that approach. Instead of looking at everything at once, it works more like a brain. It only fires off what's needed, focusing on nearby words, using context like a human would. Think of neurons firing selectively instead of the entire brain running full blast all the time. The result, according to the researchers, is between 25 times and 100 times the performance of current LLMs. That's not just speed either, it also means efficiency. The model is also leaner. It was trained on roughly 150 billion tokens only about 2% of the data used by some mainstream models, yet it still matched the performance of leading open source systems. There's a smaller open source version for everyday use and a 76 billion parameter version for complex tasks. On its demo site, the model even introduced itself as Sun Shi, a brain-inspired AI offering powerful, reliable, and energy-efficient services entirely built on Chinese technology. In one demonstration, a smaller version processed a 4 million token input in a fraction of the time normal systems would need, something that would normally choke even cutting edge GPUs. And it achieved all this without Nvidia's GPUs, a major milestone because high-end US chips are now restricted for export to China. Instead, the system ran on China's domestic MetaX chip platform, showing that the country can now develop AI at scale without relying on US semiconductor technology. If this holds up, it's not only just a technical breakthrough, but also a geopolitical one, potentially giving China more independence in the AI arms race. Now, the claims are still claims. We'll need to see a peer-reviewed validation, real benchmarks, and head-to-head -head tests before anyone can declare Spiking Brain 1.0 a revolution. But if it's even half as good as advertised, it could be a game changer. Less energy, less hardware dependence, and faster response times. Given how much power current LLMs consume, even incremental efficiency gains would be massive. Scale that across data centers, and you're not just saving money, you're reducing heat, energy demand, and environmental impact. If this brain-like approach pans out, it could point to the next evolutionary step for LLMs, where AI systems feel more alive adaptive, and capable of handling long-term context without brute force. And while we're talking about oversight and next steps, the United States government just made a pretty significant move of its own. OpenAI and Anthropic have agreed to submit their new models for evaluation by the United States Artificial Intelligence Safety Institute before they go public. Google is in talks to do the same. 
This is a first of its kind arrangement, and it means the Institute will get access to models pre-release, run safety evaluations, and even maintain access afterward for continued testing. In effect, it's like a pre-market approval process for AI, mirroring how medical drugs or aerospace systems are certified before reaching the public. The Institute itself was set up in 2023 under a Biden administration executive order. Its role is to test, evaluate, and set guidelines to make sure AI development doesn't spin out unintended consequences. And they're not doing it in isolation. The United States Institute is working with the United Kingdom's AI Safety Institute to build a kind of international standard for model safety testing. The deal isn't just symbolic. The Institute will get real access to new models, testing them for bias, harmful outputs, and unexpected behavior, creating stress tests to see how they respond under adversarial prompts, long conversations, or high-stake use cases. For the first time, governments will have visibility into systems that were previously black boxes. At the same time, California passed Senate Bill 10147, requiring costly or large-scale AI models to undergo safety checks and include a built-in kill switch. With lawsuits on the table for non-compliance, together, federal and state moves signal that oversight is no longer optional and companies like OpenAI, Anthropic, and Google have to prove compliance as AI starts impacting elections, healthcare, finance, and more. The shift is clear. Powerful models are no longer simply a private product. They're now seen as critical infrastructure with national security, economic, and societal implications. This represents a sea of change in how governments see AI, not as apps, but as forces shaping the real world. That's all I've got for today. Let me know what you think in the comments. Drop a like if you found this breakdown useful, and of course, subscribe if you don't want to miss what's coming next. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.